Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of First Pitch. I'm your host, Braxton Wheeler. I'm joined with me is head coach Ryan Brittle and my co-host Brandon Roberts. Um, guys, here we are getting to, towards the end of the season. Only winding it down. One more uh, weekend of regular season games, and the, the real fun starts. But um, let's let's recap this past week. Um, you know, it's you know it's a lot funner to do this show when uh, things are going a little smoother <laughs> and we're you know on those win streaks. But yeah, um, you know we struggled a little bit of late. There's no no way around that. And um, you know, there's we've struggled. Know. We've struggled winning games. Mm-hmm. We haven't necessarily struggled a ton in the games. Yeah. Um, Randolph making one game ended up being a blowout, but was close for seven innings. And the other game was a three-one ball game, I think, through six and maybe four to one through seven or something like that. But uh, we competed well against Randolph making. Um, so it was all good. And then Tuesday night was an absolute heartbreaker. Yeah. I mm-hmm. mean, unbelievable. Who who would have guessed so you, let's talk let's talk a little bit about this past weekend and Tuesday night coach okay um, Tuesday night we did everything we wanted I mean we we hit the ball well Joey went seven innings Noah came in in the eighth set, set it up and then we had our closer come out in the ninth I mean you're always going to say maybe you can go a little different, you know. Noah pitched well, maybe Noah could have stayed in sure. there, you know. Maybe not though, you know. That's that's the Noah, situation. Noah we could have Noah could have pitched the ninth. But you've got Will Davis in the bullpen. Not that not that like Noah or Will either one could finish the game. Mm-hmm. I have no but Will hadn't pitched since Shenandoah. You don't want to go we we don't want Will to go 2 weeks without pitching mm-hmm. on the sure. mound. So he was going to get an inning. We were going to put him in there regardless of what the what the score was and uh just happened to be that you know it was a good score in our favor six to five and uh and we're okay with will being on the mound in that spot so he was out there so i guess my question to you coach would be in going all the way back to the randolph making game okay in the second game we had an opportunity right there late in the game. Um, comes up to the bottom of the seventh. Uh, we have two outs. Carlton Red is still on the mound. Has a guy on second and third at this time. And we have a couple of different situations we can play right here. You know, like we end, we end up going putting um, the third hole batter, Michael Nichols, who's a left handed hitter, on and bringing in Byrne to pitch a righty on righty matchup, try to get a quick out, you know, and send it into the next inning. What was the thought process behind that? Like, what was some of the strategy? What what made you not want to bring maybe Noah in in a situation like that for a lefty on lefty matchup and try to, you know, get that three hole hitter out, or you know maybe bring someone else in from the pen like Tomlin to get a, maybe a ground ball out on that right handed hitter? What was just the strategy behind? Well, the, the what for the one reason why I didn't bring Tomlin in, <laughs> Tomlin's been hurt, hadn't hadn't been on the mound since since then. He has thrown some bullpens and been okay, but. Um, I just wasn't sure that Tomlin was ready. Um, and Noah, um, you know, it's tough as a coach to figure out, okay, when do you burn your bullets? You know, we got two bullets in the bullpen with Noah and Will. And uh, when, do you, when do you use them? Do you use them when you're down a few runs? Or do you wait and hold on and see if you can scratch back to even or ahead and then um, get close and then use them. And I can't remember exactly what the score six was. Five. Seven to five. It was, it was six we, five at first and then they scored two runs off. Um, it was seven to five. Yeah, we, eight, five. Yeah, it was seven to five. It was seven to five. Mm-hmm. So it was seven to five. We're down two runs. Uh, we got a lefty with red on the mound. Uh, red was starting to look a little bit shaky, I thought, or not sharp. Um, so we decided that we'd uh, walk the left-handed hitter uh, to get to the righty. I mean, if you look at stats, the lefty's hitting over 300, and the righty's hitting in the mid twos. Mm-hmm. And uh, we had uh, we had Noah ready in the bullpen, and we also had Vern ready in the bullpen. So we decided to pitch to the righty and bring in a sidearm guy and try and throw him a few sliders and and get him out. And um, so his bases loaded, two outs. Um, Burn hung him a breaking ball and he capped it over top of the third baseman's head and they scored a couple runs and at that point you're not going to change before before you know when it's seven to five you try to do the best you can to stay in the game uh, if we would have got out of that inning 
Uh, there's, you know, Noah probably, uh, Noah would have had a better chance of coming in. You know, it's just one of those deals where, you know, as a head coach, you make a decision and you <coughs> stick with it. And um, would it do the same way? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But I knew I wanted Noah and Will in games where we were either tied or ahead mm -hmm. so that we, we had the best chance of winning. Yeah. Um, in the first game, kind of a similar situation, Brax came in and, mm -hmm. and got some big outs for us. Um, but I wasn't going to – Roth was absolutely dealing mm -hmm. at that point. And it, a three-run lead was like a – six run lead against yeah. anybody else with him on the mound but anyway that was kind of my thought process yeah. going through that um, so and then you know yesterday we ended up we ended up needing Noah and Will yesterday or Tuesday against Roanoke so mm -hmm. um, yeah if you if you think about it like this with taking it back so of course it was weird playing a doubleheader on Monday and then we have to play yeah. Tuesday so like the thought process and the coaching that is certainly different so much different than if we'd have played on Saturday yeah. no one will would have certainly. been in the games pitching mm -hmm. on Saturday and right. if you look back on it too like if you would have told us that yesterday you're playing Rona Joey goes seven Noah goes eight will goes nine or I mean either or like that's exactly the ideal mm -hmm. situation right. and whether you know whether Look, I think yesterday when those guys, when the guy hit the home run off of Will, that was more about, that wasn't more about Roanoke, that was more about Will, you know, leaving that pitch up. And um, if you have, if you have, um, you know, you're telling me that you got a one run lead and you got no and Will coming in, you're going to take that 99 mm -hmm. 100 sure. times, you know? Mm -hmm. So when you look back on it, you know, it all makes sense and that's exactly what you want. And if you had to do it again, I'm sure us as a team, we're going to take that. You know, we're going to take that um, if it comes up in the thing tournament. about fine. Tuesday night is it? The young man that Robbie that hit the three home runs, Four he was two for eleven on the season. Oh. I know. With no RBIs, and he would struck know. out five times in eleven at bats. It's yep. Crazy. Unbelievable. And he's a senior. And crazy, he's a senior. Crazy sport we play, huh? And he and he's in there because their catcher got hurt mm -hmm. against Randolph Macon. <coughs> so he DH while the catcher actually called. And I and I literally sat there in the in the ninth inning and I go. He came up with a runner on first base. I was like, we're in good shape. I was mm -hmm. like, the dude's already hit two home runs. He's certainly not going to do this again. Yeah. And then then he hits one off the scoreboard yeah. to go up seven to six. And I'm like, if someone, you just can't you just can't write this. You mm -hmm. can't make it up. Yeah, it's if someone like hits three home tail. runs like that, five out of their seven runs, you know, that's just that's cap off totally. to you. Cap off to we you. We did a good yeah. job. Now, now, this is what we could have done. This is what we should have been better at. In the in the Rono game, we had runners on third base with less than two outs several times in the games, and didn't score them. We had opportunities to extend leads offensively, and we didn't get that done, and it cost us in the end. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily the ninth inning that beats you; um, it's other things that you do during the game. And th that's one thing I know. Two different innings specifically: the inning we scored five runs in, we had the bases loaded with one out yeah. in the middle of our order up, and we didn't score any more runs. Mm -hmm. You know. You got to get a couple more runs, right? At least one more run right there. And we, the first inning, we had a runner at third with one out, mm -hmm. and we didn't score him in the first. So, opportunities missed. Um, and those are things that um, we're going to have to do moving forward this weekend and into into next week when the conference tournament starts in order to be successful and to move on. Yeah, that, yeah, that five run inning yesterday was. I mean, it was really sweet, but um, I mean, it was two days ago, run out game. That five run inning was sweet, but at the same time, like you said, bases loaded, one out. You know, if you can at least get that second out to score a run there, you know, it changes the whole aspects of things. But Speaking of yesterday, our developmental team oh, yeah. had a doubleheader yesterday. They they won the first game eleven to one. They actually mm -hmm. tied the second game one to one. Uh -huh. But our but our developmental team, I'm pretty sure we we were ten seven and one on the season for our developmental team. So. Uh, those guys got, I think, 18 games played in awesome. and won 10 of them. And I'm telling you, the difference between them, the first game and the games yesterday is huge. Mm -hmm. Like, they played better. They're more competitive, uh, hitting, pitching, the whole deal. It's been what, good for That's them. the best record the 
developmental team since, I was gonna since ask we've that. been here. Yeah, but. Coach Austin got the developmental yeah. team coach of the year. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely a good season for him. So, anyway, let's we could sit here and talk about Roanoke and make it all day. We really could, and if ands and stuff. Okay. But it's over. It's time to move on. Um, so, I was talking to Coach a little bit before the show started how many different scenarios can happen this weekend at Hampton right. Sydney. We can go anywhere from three to seven. Um, we can host, we can go yes. away. It's so so much the third finish. place team, for those of you who haven't looked, third place team is Virginia Wesley, and they're 12 and 8. The 11th place team is 8 and 11. So there's 11 teams that can still get into our conference tournament with two games left. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're, we're stuck right there in the middle. We're 11 and 9. And go in and play Hampton Sydney, who's 11 and 8. Shenandoah is 11 and 9. Lynchburg's 11 and 9. Uh, mm -hmm. Wesley is 12 and 8. Roanoke's. 14 and 6, um, Macon is 14, 5 and 1. So um, we can't get to the top two spots, but we can get to the third spot and we can certainly um, get to the seventh spot too. But we are in the tournament. We're going to play in the tournament. It's just a matter of where we go and uh, who we play. Yeah, that's all. It's, I mean, it's, it's a great feeling to know that like you're in the tournament. We have a chance at this thing, especially in the tournament. But now it's, and certainly I, I don't mean this in a bad way in any way but I mean the, uh, this conference is so crazy and even it's right crazy. now honestly I don't I don't know if it matters at this point who you play right there because no. anybody can beat anyone anyone can you know it's the 11th place team in our conference right now is 8 and 11 there's like three of them tied at 8 and 11 any of those teams could win our conference yeah. tournament mm -hmm. they, honestly, they could certainly. any any of the top any of the 11 teams that are that are still eligible could could get hot and win the tournament mm -hmm. so We'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. And we start, at, we start at noon? Is it noon or yeah. 12.30? Noon. Yeah. Noon. Okay. So. Noon on Saturday at Hampton Sydney. All right. Double header. I don't have anything else. Uh, we'll, we'll be back at you next week. I guess we'll have a, we'll have a bracket. No, we're not going to do like a March Madness bracket, but <laughs> we'll have a bracket ready for them. We'll have our matchup set, and we're, uh, we're ready for the, um, this weekend and ready just to see where we're going to play next week, and we're excited. And, might, it might be a little slow lately, but we're going to turn this thing back up and uh, make a run at it. So Absolutely. That's all I got. You guys have anything else? We're good. All right. All right. Well, hopefully you come to the games this weekend. If not, see you next week. Thanks. <laughs>